Coming up on Cardinals Insider, we're entering the second half of a historic season. We put these final weeks of an era in perspective. Also, to see him at this stage in life, it's just incredible. Ryan wasn't the only Helsley at the All-Star game. Tag along with his family to L.A. Then later, one of the Cardinal scouts came up to me and said, hey, we want to draft you first round. And I'm like, are you serious? What's it like to play as a first rounder? Former Cardinal Brian Jordan lets us know. Those stories and more ahead on Cardinals Insider. Welcome to Cardinals Insider, I'm Ozzie Smith. We have nine episodes left in our Cardinals Insider season. And over these final episodes, we're gonna deepen our look at the legacy Yachty, Albert, and Wayno have created as a trio. We're calling the series, The Last Inning. And we begin with a look at what it's like to stare down the end of a storied era. The end is hard. It's the last inning, the final frame. You'll never sit next to your best friend in quite the same context. This is it. Not many get to play this game. Even fewer get to change it. As a player, you try and live in the moment, but at this point in the story, you can't ignore what's coming next. When your jersey becomes a jacket. You're closer to the end than ever before. Still, there's part of you that thinks the best is yet to come. Because for everything that's changed, this game and these fans still make you feel the same. Breathe deep, soak it in, shake hands with your future. Moments like this don't happen twice. Moments like this don't happen anywhere else. Ryan Helsley was a first-time All-Star this season. All-Star status means a lot to a player and those closest to him. The Helsleys made the trip from Oklahoma to LA for All-Star Week and our cameras caught up with them. We got a text after the game and it just had a picture of an envelope. And he was, we were like, open it, you know? And he's like, I have arm care, I don't have time. And I'm like, this is your dad. Open the envelope right now. So he opened it and showed us the picture and of course, you know, happy tears, um, proud tears. Um, he's worked hard for this, so proud moment. I was excited, a lot of nerves. I actually didn't pack an outfit for it at all, so everything you see here is bought this morning. So uh, yeah, we got up there and they said, all right, you're free to walk, and my heart was beating out of my chest. I was super excited. He looked great. I, I love the suit. Um, the plaid look, it was a good look, yeah. It's crazy because my grandpa was a Cardinals fan, and Ryan grew up a Cardinals fan. Like I said, we, we used to drive up to St. Louis to watch, and you know, and. You start playing baseball and you're like, man, that'd be kind of cool. And you put that dream out there and you keep working, you turn around and you get your name called on draft day. And it's like, holy cow, it's for the Cardinals. You know, one of the most storied organizations in all of pro ball. 
and to play on the same field that so many legends have played on is, is truly an honor. It's just incredible. Um, you know, the one thing parents need to do is support their children, whatever they do. Um, the good, the bad, the highs, the lows, that's just what you do as a parent. So to see him at this stage in life, it's just incredible. Being my brother my whole life, you know, uh, he grows up just being a good dork and bullying me, you know, like a brother's do, just beat me up. And then he comes out here and he's worked hard all of his life. And so I've seen him progress like through each stage and it's just been awesome seeing him succeed in the way he has because he's worked for it and he's earned every bit of it. In just a bit, Brian Jordan discusses making his way as a first rounder in the Cardinals system. I didn't even have that on my radar at the time to be entering the Major League Baseball draft. And right after the break, the Cardinals and Yankees have had some big moments over the past century. It is a home run. A grand slam that's fair by only five or six feet. A look back at the history and majesty of two great franchises. The Yankees visit St. Louis this month for the first time since 2014. New York and St. Louis are the winningest franchises in baseball history and two of the most recognizable sports brands in the world. And during the past century, their histories have intertwined over and over. They've combined to win a third of the World Series on record, and they've done it with some of the most iconic names in baseball history. Their logos are time-honored and long-tenured, as steady as their winning ways. Two franchises which still resonate with the fans and players of today. There's a lot of history there, uh, as well as you know, with St. Louis. Just being able to compete against them, we're a real you know, historic franchise as well, so the fact that we get to play another big-time franchise is pretty, uh, pretty exciting. The two best organizations ever. Love to have a Yankees Cardinals World Series, that's for sure. Time will tell if Paul gets his way, but history has given us five Cards Yanks Fall Classics. Two of them even went to seven games. The first in 1926. After winning games two and six as a starter, Grover Cleveland Alexander came out of the bullpen in game seven. He took over with two outs and the bases loaded, striking out future Hall of Famer Tony Lazari to leave the bases loaded in the Bronx. It was the Cards' first World Series winner. Fast forward 38 years to 1964. There was a Boyer brother at third base for both teams, Cleet for the Yankees and big brother Ken for the Cardinals. And it was Kenny Boyer who stole the show in the Big Apple, blasting a go-ahead grand slam in the sixth inning of game four, keeping the Bombers from taking a commanding 3-1 series lead. It is a home run. A grand slam that's fair by only five or six feet. St. Louis took the series in seven back at Sportsman's Park. The Cardinals are 13 and 10 all time in World Series games against New York, and they've won three of the five fall classics against the Bronx Bombers. New York winning in 28 and 43. In addition to 26 and 64, St. Louis also won in 42, capping the winningest season in franchise history. The two clubs have had plenty of signature moments since that 1964 meeting, but they haven't come together in the World Series in nearly 60 years. Even with such a drought, the history and respect runs deep. Perhaps this fall will renew the greatest rivalry that hardly anyone talks about. For Cardinals Insider, I'm Brett McMillan. And in just a bit, that's a key thing with me is that I just want to go out there and play. Whether it's starting or leaving, I just want to fall. Get to know 2022 first round draft pick Cooper Jerpy. That's coming up, so stay with us. The MLB draft unfolded July 17th through the 19th and saw the Cardinals select 20 players, including 13 pitchers, one of whom was a 22nd overall pick, Cooper Jerpy. The Oregon State left-hander comes to the cards after an impressive junior season. He posted a sub-3 ERA and went 11-2 over 18 starts. He also averaged more than 14 strikeouts per nine innings. Let's get to know the system's newest hurler. On behalf of uh, our ownership, John Mosellock, entire front office and scouting department, 
Uh, we are we are just ecstatic with Cooper Jerp even available at our pick. Um, when you look at his body of work, his three-year track record, uh, we've seen the upper ranges of his velocity. He provides a unique look that, that really can make hitters uncomfortable. And uh, he's someone that we hope can, can move fast once we get him in our org, once we hand him off to Gary LaRock, Tim Lovec, and our player development department. You know, his fastball, all of his pitches come from a unique angle. They all tunnel very well. You know, we've seen his velocity consistently that he maintains. And one of the things you look for is stamina in a pitcher. And if you look at his workload, what he's done this year, the bulk that he's done. We haven't seen the drop off that you might see in someone who you wonder whether or not they can sustain. And as you've seen in the modern game, we wouldn't be surprised if he starts reaching the upper echelons of his velocity a little bit more than he's doing now. Yeah, I remember people in Little League saying, man, that guy's got a funky arm action. So um, just natural, you know, so um, obviously the effectiveness plays plays without the, the velocity, obviously. So um, that was never a worry for me. I know throwing hard something you can always develop and work hard at and everyone wants it. So it's obviously something that I want as well. But uh, I think just just from proving how the velocity doesn't need to be there for how effective the fastball plays is something that I've always always um, had confidence in and the consistency of it throughout this season was um, next level compared to last season as well so I'm um, just planning on keep doing that and staying consistent with it. The biggest improvement I made this year compared to last year is definitely the, the development of the off-speed pitches the change up in the slider and uh, obviously my sophomore year I was still trying to throw that um, that curveball and get depth on the pitch and Obviously, invested in myself and went to driveline this last off season and went through a pitch design and stuff. And I think that's what really helped me as well was just understanding how my body moved and what pitches would work best for me. And um, obviously, started throwing a more sweep sweeper slider instead of the curveball, and that paid off. And it was really more consistent, and I had way more confidence in it. It's awesome. I mean, I have full belief in myself to do that as well, and I think that. Honestly, if you need me in any spot, I'm ready for it. And that's that's a key thing with me is that I just want to go out there and play, whether it's starting or leaving, I just want to fall. So. Being a first rounder comes with a lot of notice. Former Cardinal Brian Jordan knows that well. BJ was selected 30th overall in the 1988 draft. He debuted in 1992 and spent seven of his 15 seasons with St. Louis. Here's more on his journey from the first round to the big leagues. I didn't even expect to be drafted at first, uh, but going to University of Richmond, we actually had an exhibition against the Richmond Braves at the time. And I remember David Justice, Ron Gant, all those guys were in Triple A, one step away from the big leagues, and their top p pitching prospect was on the mound. And uh, I had a phenomenal day against their top pitcher, and after the game, uh, one of the Cardinal scouts came up to me and said, hey, we want to draft you first round. And I'm like, are you serious? Because I knew what my dreams were, was to play in the NFL and Major League Baseball. And I was just a junior. I didn't even have that on my radar at the time to be entering the Major League Baseball draft. But when I heard the news, I was kind of excited. I remember calling my parents and saying, hey, this scout from the Cardinals came up to me and said, uh, I'm going to be drafted. And I was just totally shocked. And next thing you know, I'm the 30th pick in the Major League Draft in 88. You know, I got a chance to visit St. Louis when I signed and uh, to be around Ozzie Smith, Willie McGee, Vince Combe, and, you know, Todd Rowell, Danny Cox, all those, all those players who experienced winning. Uh, I knew I had to put in the work to get to that point, to be able to possibly play for a world championship with the St. Louis Cardinals. So it was a lot of pressure, but Pressure that I love. Gordon will head to at least third base, and it's a two out triple. There it goes, heading for the bullpen. See you later, and the Cardinals are on the board. 2 0 pitch. Ryan Jordan drives one to left field. This one is out of here. One big thing that Ozzie and Willie would say pace yourself. Don't try to be, you know, too much because this is a game where you're going to be learning every single game and you got to be patient. And I didn't understand patience back then. You know, for me, being an NFL player, I was aggressive, aggressive. So patience was pretty tough for me. But uh, I had to learn it in baseball, and eventually I did. To be drafted number one was a challenge. It was, like I said, it was a lot of pressure put on you because there was a high expectation on you. And for you to live up to that, it takes hard work. And 
you know, now that I, I look back and see some of these young guys, I mean, I tell them, hey, you know, it's, it's an honor to be up in the big leagues, but to stay in the big leagues, it's, it's tougher. So you have to continue to work, have great work ethic, and continue to want to get better every single day. And if you do, you're going to be successful. And still to come, from one great slugger to another, see what St. Louis and Ryan Howard did to honor Albert Pujols. That's after the break. In January, St. Louis police officer Colin Ledbetter was shot in the line of duty. It's been a long and improbable journey. He not only survived, but is walking under his own power. Donated blood was critical to Officer Ledbetter's survival. He came to Bush earlier this summer to talk about his journey and how blood donation can save lives. He's here tonight, thanks in part to the generosity of volunteer blood donors like you. I was a surgeon uh, when uh, Officer Ledbetter came into the emergency room. Um, as, as many people know the story, but he uh, did not have a heartbeat when he came in. We did some emergency surgery and were able to revive him and got him back up to the OR. Having blood available is really important for trauma patients that have immediately lost a lot of blood and it's really the only way to improve their survival. Um, it means everything. I mean, obviously, um, it's my life now. So, um, yeah, it's uh, important. Um, definitely wasn't a big thing before I was shot. Um, and I kind of regret that, um, I suppose. Um, I have given blood in the past, but not as much as I will now, so. You know, every two seconds, somebody needs blood. The need for blood is constant, and it's something that we see year in and year out. But we know that during the summer months, our blood donations, unfortunately, they, they drop off. But the need for blood continues. So the need for folks to come out to the Cardinals blood drive and give is vital. All summer, we've been showing you the various tributes Albert and Yachty have received on the road. Today, we stop in Philadelphia where Ryan Howard came out to honor Albert. When we return, I'm answering one of your questions. It's Ask Ozzy, and it's up next. It's time for this week's Ask Ozzy. Kate in Chicago, Illinois asks, what was it like when a new teammate played his first game for the Cardinals? Well, Kate, as young players come, you always want to see them do well, and especially if they have family in the stands. And there's always that anticipation of, of the excitement of being or finally making it to the big leagues. And uh, as a veteran player, you always want to see that guy do well. And, and if he's fortunate enough to have a big day, then <laughs> all the better. It was part of what I think makes the the, the organization, the special organization that it is. You know, they have, we've always had a great mixture of young and old and, and veterans are there to, to kind of guide young guys if there if they're a lot of questions. And sometimes uh, guys are too shy to do it, but I, with the guys that I've had the opportunity to play with, they've always been guys that were easy to talk to and uh, are very approachable. Thanks for the question, Kate. 
If you want to submit a question, head on over to cardinals.com slash insider and click the Ask Ozzy tab. But for now, stay with us. There's more Cardinals Insider after the break. Cardinals Insider is a team effort, and that includes you. We'd love to hear from you. To get in touch with the show, head on over to cardinals.com slash insider and click on the Contact Us tab. And while you're there, you can rewatch old episodes and check out our podcast, too. It's all at cardinals.com slash insider. On July 2nd, the Cardinals let it fly in Philadelphia with four straight homers in the top of the first. We look back on that fireworks display during this week's Redbird Reels. Arenado out to left, Veerling back, looks up, and it's gone! A line shot! Home run, Nolan Arenado! And Gorman hits it out to deep right. The Cardinals have gone back to back. 3 0 St. Louis. Nolan Gorman with home run number seven. And Yepes hits it out to deep left field. It is gone! Three consecutive home runs. Arenado, Gorman, Yepes. Carlson makes it four in a row. Way St. Louis, Arenado, Gorman, Yepes, and now Dylan. That's all for this episode. Join us again next week. And as always, you can watch new episodes on YouTube or at cardinals.com insider. For everyone involved with the show, I'm Ozzie Smith, and we'll see you next time.